Welcome to PodCamp Pittsburgh and Podcasting 101. Is anybody from out of town? Welcome to Pittsburgh. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Hutch Bailey. I'm Bird's Eye View on Twitter. And basically, just a disclaimer, I'm not a social media expert. I'm just a relatively, relatively successful podcaster uh, and producer. And uh, I'll get to that relative reference a little uh, further as we go here. Uh, speaking of social media experts, I'd like to introduce uh, Sword from the area's premier wrestling podcast. Amongst other things, yes. Uh, I'm Mike Sorg. I do, uh, well, we've been doing a wrestling mayhem show uh, for about five years now. Uh, I started uh, to do Sorgatron Media as sort of a place for my other stuff. I want to branch out, so I do a uh, technology podcast and the awesome cast. Uh, uh, we do a music uh, cast. I'm helping uh, my friend Josh do a, a, a kind of a video blog uh, show we're kind of experimenting with. and. Uh, by day, I'm a video editor, and I do some other kind of professional podcasts. Thank you for me, so. I'd also like to introduce Shell. She's my co-host on most of my shows. Uh, I got a couple <coughs> questions before we get started. Uh, has anybody never downloaded a po- or listened to a podcast? That's good. That's good. Good start. <laughs> good start. How many people want to plan a podcast? Awesome. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we're here for. Does anybody already have your own podcast? What, uh, what do you? I, um, I assist a friend of mine with his podcast, IronCityRocks.com. Oh, outstanding. Uh, East Coast Wine Geeks. Nice. Anybody else? Oh, let's <laughs> plug it. Yeah, MaximLife. MaximLife.com. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> has anybody ever listened to my show or Wrestling Man show? Okay, we have to change that a little bit. Business <laughs> cards up here. Uh, okay, my show's about all things Pittsburgh and beyond. I've been publishing episodes since 2006. Uh, it started out with my son and I doing a podcast about his high school football career. Then as he got older, he went and started playing football in college. He wasn't around as much. Uh, and the, the couple milestones that happened to me, in 2007, I'm in the Army. In 2007, I got sent to Iraq, and I had to decide, do I want to let the show die, or do I want to keep, keep it going? So I took the show with me to Iraq, and actually episodes 19 to 40, I have 97 now, 19 to 40 are that time period, training up and going to Iraq and coming back on leave, and, and that whole thing. So I decided to keep it going, and I'm glad I did. Did you need permission to do that? I did not. I don't do we anything. Didn't ask permission to do I didn't. I didn't broadcast anything classified. And actually, it was very. I'm a CW4. I'm, I'm not just a sergeant or so. I have. I know enough that I did what I was able to do. I didn't speak much about. The only thing we talked about militarily. I didn't even mention locations. I I would make fun of people. Like we had some, some contractors that cracked me up, <coughs> things like that. But if you're going there to get a blow by blow of the war, it wasn't that. I kept the two things separate. Good question, though. Uh, so anyway, I did that. I brought it back. Got home in 2008, and by October the show was on the decline. I wasn't having very many downloads. And this is the important part. I came here to Pod Camp. I did a couple things at the same time. Everybody's on Twitter, right? Is anybody not on Twitter? Okay, that's, that's something you almost have to do now. But anyway, I changed the show a little bit, introduced Shell to the audience, and uh, we've been going upward ever since then. Rule number one, chicks get raped. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's a fact. I bet people evaluate my show and told me that. <laughs> uh, just one more side note. Uh, I came to PodCamp Pittsburgh 3, and got on Twitter, and, and it like changed my life. I'm not saying that I'm a different person, but I met so many different people. I mean, so we all know each other. You know, we've been to each other's houses, and, and it's it's just wonderful. Tom, out the audience, there's others. Uh, so I really encourage that. And uh, if you have anything to say before we get started on your show or about my, or well, about I, any of your shows, I started you're actually time. a mobile now. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> I, I, I actually was doing streaming radio uh, at, uh, to the point where I had a shoutcast server computer just right there in my room and, uh, and broadcasting to like maybe 10 people. Uh, we thought, started talking about wrestling after Monday nights, ended up talking to Will DJ Lunchbox on the show, 
this podcasting started becoming a thing, and uh, we just kind of turned it into that. Uh, and this year, I kind of uh, made a move to kind of put it under a banner with this, uh, and kind of you know see if you know I can help other people with podcasting, uh, and, you know, kind of as a freelancer. Um, we moved to video, uh, which I'll be talking about tomorrow on the video podcasting 201. Uh, for a lot of the shows, started a tech show, started a music show, you know, things that I like to talk about that are easy for me to talk about and <coughs> every week without getting tired of it, which is really important when you're deciding to start this, which we'll get into. So, um, I guess I think that's about it for me. Yeah. Okay, our goal today is to familiarize you guys with uh, what it takes to produce and sustain an audio or video podcast. If uh, you have any questions along the way, feel free to interrupt us. Uh, something that happened to us, a lesson learned, this is the second time that we've done this, and if we get too detailed into everything, we're going to run out of time before we run out of stuff we want to cover. And, and I'll be doing a podcasting tool one in, I think, this room right afterwards, so we can get more in-depth with that. That's going to be a little more seeing what people want to learn about. Okay, what is the podcast and where can I find them? I think everybody knows what they are. It's either an audio or video, uh, radio show or TV show in legacy terms. Uh, and you can find them all over the place. There's a bunch of different ways you can find them. iTunes, Podcast, Pickle. You, you can do a Google search. Uh, and if you have podcasts in there, then you can generalize it down into what you're searching for. Uh, before you create a podcast, I would suggest that you go and listen to them or watch them. Just uh, see what's out there, especially if you, uh, you know, have an area that you want to get into. Uh, iTunes lists most of them, and they're free. Uh, and I'm sure you know I don't have to go through the mechanics. See if anybody else is doing what you want to talk about. For sure. Yeah, and, and listening to or watching them should familiarize you with the different types of shows. And uh, if you don't have an idea, that should help you out a little bit. Uh, okay, but yeah, these are some different ways you can get them on RSS feed, Google Reader, check the podcast website. Most of us have websites, and there's additional things there. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes it's just a little flash in the for you listening to the show if you just want to go there. The most important thing that I can stress, if you want to have a podcast and not have it burn out, uh, I don't know what the actual percentages are, but if you do a search for any type of podcast, let's say from, in my case, Pittsburgh podcast or wrestling podcast, you're going to get a ton of results. But when you look at them, 90% of them are burned out. They did a couple podcasts, and the last episode was 2007. You know, there's only, it, it's, it's tough to keep a, a podcast alive. Uh, you have to really want to do it, and it all starts with this. You have to ensure, I mean, obviously, if you're doing something for business, that's, that's a different <coughs> situation. But if you're doing one for entertainment or for whatever niche you're looking for, you've got to be passionate about it to keep doing it, because it's kind of difficult, I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's tough if you do like what you're talking about. <laughs> Some of the different ways to think about that and break it down, uh, I've narrowed this down into two, two pretty different areas. One, you have your broad and universal topics, uh, which is general, like sports, politics, food. You have that in common with everybody in the country and in other countries. I mean, once you put a podcast out there, don't expect that the only downloads you're going to get are from the United States. I think we have 63 countries logged in or something yeah, that listen to our show not, not all over the place. We had a fellow from Russia that does a podcast on and more than half of our downloads for that week were from Russia. One of our favorite listeners is from Ireland and he interacts uh -huh. with the show all the time. Yeah, we talk to him all the time. I have a, a lady that lives in Zambia that interacts with the show. She's from Pittsburgh and she uprooted and went out and moved to Zambia and she works there and she gets back and forth, so that's pretty neat. One of the uh, benefits of the broad <clears throat> universal type show is you're going to have a wider audience uh, and you're going to have more competition. So if you go out there and you want to do uh, something on football or something, there's thousands of people that have podcasts about that. So I'm not saying don't do it. But just understand what you're getting into. If you want to do a technology podcast these days, there are a lot of them. They're the ones that are getting, I think, the biggest numbers. Um, but there are just so many of them. And people, that was pretty much the first thing that was being podcast because people are already into new technologies. 
then going out there and talking about the new technologies they're into. So it was just kind of like a natural fit for the, for the genre. Now on the other side, you have your narrow, more focused pod podcasts, and they're like mine. Mine is primarily interesting, interesting to people from Pittsburgh or people who have some connection. Uh, so that's your regional. You're more specific if you want to get into just red wine or you want to get into just Chevy Chevettes, you know, or something like that, Corvettes. That's your, uh, you're going to, the, the disadvantage with that is you're going to have a narrower audience, uh, but you're going to get your niche. You could hit it big that way. I mean, there's, there's podcasts to have. If, if there's enough people that are interested in what you're talking about uh, and you can get it out there, either way you can hit it big. Now, if you have a good podcast in the broad universal area versus the narrow, more focused area, you're going to have a bigger audience. Okay, my audience isn't as big as his audience. They're both big, but I like cut a whole lot of people out when I narrow mine down to Pittsburgh. People in Los Angeles don't really care, although I did have somebody from Los Angeles on the show, but she was from oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never heard. Yeah. Okay, next. Okay, a lot of people worry, think about equipment. Uh, and, and Mike can tell you, most of us started out with a minimum of equipment. You don't have to spend a lot of money to have a podcast, even a video podcast anymore with the flip cams. But uh, we, webcams. Or webcams, right? Built in, built in on my iMac. It's one of the cameras I use for my video podcast. <laughs> but that's something that we, you don't have to spend a lot of money. I did, the shows that I did, well, when I was in Iraq, I took some equipment with me. But leading up to going to Iraq, actually as I was deciding whether I was going to do this or not, I just had a, well, I'm going to show you here in a minute. It, it was minimal. That, that there is, uh, that's the mixer I use. It's like a eight channel mixer or whatever. That's a 10. But uh, not for editing, that's for the sound quality. Yeah, I'm, I'm real crazy. That's just for the initial recording. That's a, uh, actually, that is a Xenix 1222FX mixer. I have four MXL V36 mics and one additional condenser mics, mic stands, and I have five panelist stations in my studio with, with headphones, so. But, but like you said, like, you know, I started. That's now, though. Yeah, yeah, I started, I had a <coughs> 10, $15 PC mic. We started just getting splitter cables to accommodate more people in the studio. The studio, with each of my computer right there, so. And to me, it was just my living quarters. So I had a laptop and uh, one microphone with a little $40 uh, tube MP. I don't know if you call it a mixer, it was, uh, it's not a mixer. It's a mini ART two MP pre Yeah, preamp. That's what it was. You gotta yeah, have too that. much to be in this well. <laughs> you gotta have that fan <laughs> power. I like my audio gear. <laughs> yeah, and then that's how I got it to the to the internet through Italy. But it uh, that was that was painful too. That was some of those uploads were eight nine hours. <laughs> now for now and it wouldn't work, wow. and I have to go back and do it again. How big was the final final file size that you were trying to upload over that? Fifty megabytes. Fifty megabytes. <laughs> 50 to 60 That's megabytes. like ten seconds today. I mean, <laughs> well, this was going through. I mean, we weren't uh, like fires or anything. Oh, of course. But it was, <laughs> we did it though. I mean, we 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 uploaded them. And I like I said, shows uh, nineteen to forty. I'd say. Three quarters of those were from the country of Iraq. Yes. Can you please say again a little more slowly what mics you use, and did you put those mics directly into your computer or into the preamp and then into your computer? No, they went into the mixer. You have to have uh, there, there's different kind of microphones, but with a condenser mic, it has to have phantom power. power yeah. So you have to have something that provides that phantom power. Uh, but it's a my mixer is a 12 channel. Xenix, I can show you this after the show. Actually, it's kind of hard to spell. Okay. But uh, I'll be glad to, after the uh, program here, we'll, uh, I'll give you these notes. Okay, great. The microphones are four MXL V36 microphones. Uh, okay, next slide. And there's a lot, a lot today, uh, you know, we do the board method, but a lot of it, if it's just you or one or two people, uh, there's plenty of po great podcasting, just straight USB mics, if you don't need okay. that much control, like, like we try to reserve on what we're doing. What's, That's what budget? Give us a dollar amount. Budget? What you started? Or Let's see. You started with fifteen dollar mics and computers I had on hand versus today I have 
a, a I upgraded to an eight channel board. That, <coughs> that Bar Behringer is a really good brand for cheaper audio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, for cheaper right. hardware, but pretty good quality. Good quality. Well, solid solid quality. quality. I know we use it. We use it in my day job whenever we can too, um, when we need to record. What's um, it called again? Behringer. Behringer. The two channel one I have also. The two. It's, it's like B H. It's like a weird German Orange spelling. If, if you if you try to sound on spell it on, on Google, it'll come up. Or musician's friend, it uh, or or was it Zounds or something, uh, it, or even Amazon probably. Um, microphone. Uh, thankfully for me, I was also uh, had a rap group at the time when I was buying a lot of my equipment, uh, so I kind of had a dual purpose. Uh, Eighty dollar microphone um, by MXL. Uh, That's pretty good. I used to use it to pick up everybody sitting on a couch. Um, but just, you know, turn the sensitivity, sensitivity up a little bit. Um, and I have a couple wireless mics from when we used to perform, or I don't even remember what, what they are, but they were, they were like $150, $200 each because of the wireless. Um, and out of that, computers I built, you know, I mean, really, audio especially, I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it pretty much recorded on a netbook <coughs> these days. I think a microphone like this is from $50 to $75 something. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, locally, if you go out to Blonox, there's a store called Pianos and stuff. Mm -hmm. These guys are all musicians. Mm -hmm. You go in there, you go, I've got this amount of money to spend, I want to do this, mm -hmm. and they'll put you in the gear that the best Oh, yeah, you oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk, talk, you, if you have access to, you know, other guys like that, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be able to fit you in. You, you, can, you can start off really pretty normal. What, what, what's your, your, your budget like? Now, uh, I think the mixer cost. Start, start to now. At the beginning, it was just one of those microphones, the plastic gooseneck microphones yeah. that cost three dollars. Yeah. To go in the front of the laptop, and that was it. Yeah. And then, then I added a thirty-dollar tube MP uh, preamp, and then I bought one of these and a couple cables that went with it. So we're up to about a hundred bucks now, maybe. Uh, and then, as we went, then I decided, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I had a, an episode that I didn't like the quality of the sound and I couldn't do anything with it with my editing software. Uh, so I said, you know what, let's just, I don't plan on stopping this anytime soon. I'm going to get some stuff for Christmas. And I, I ended up and spent a couple dollars on it and uh, got boom mic stands and got four of these mics. And I think the mixer cost three, four hundred dollars, something like that. But the point is, is you don't need to do that. Um, as you mentioned, software we didn't mention. I, uh, I guess the inspection looks like you're using Adobe Edition, uh, which I think is now Sound uh, not Soundtracks, the Apple one. Uh, sound Sound Booth, thank you. It's been a while. Um, but you don't need that. It's like a $200 program or whatever. Uh, Audacity, look up just Audacity. It's free, it's fine. It has all the basic stuff you're going to need if you're just doing some pretty simple editing, maybe a little bit of cleaning. I'm sure there's plenty of tutorials on there for it. Uh, if you're not, you know, big in audio editing, it's it's pretty easy to learn uh, if you take a little bit of time with it. And I say it's free, and all, all platforms, by the way. To record a podcast, that's all you need. I mean, this is when I was out in the field. I was out in the woods. Uh, to I the point, to, to record a podcast, this is all you need, or a sound recorder sometimes. I mean, this all I had. The place to do this is to get a, have a laptop, a Humvee, and two master sergeants, and you can do a podcast no problem. <laughs> <laughs> This is Sword Studio. Oh, hey, that's before I moved stuff. I asked you to buy any pictures you wanted. I said you didn't know one, but yeah, that's, 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 that's nice. nice. This, is, this has been organized a little bit since. Um, yeah, I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> that, 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 like I said, I, I do a lot of video and the Skype and everything, and they're all single core, slow computers that I've gotten secondhand from businesses getting rid of them and stuff. Yes? Um, yeah. I. One of the things that I'd like to do, because I run an international nonprofit, is I'd like to record Skype to Skype. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a way to do that? Sure. There is. And actually, I'll be covering a lot of that in the two of them. It's going to be a big focus on that. All of our call-ins, we have call-ins on the show, and they're all Skype. Uh, Ward has been a guest host on my show. He called in with we, Skype. It works great. We have, like, when, when people started kind of moving <clears> to, like, I'm a beach view, I moved to Irwin, so he can't come over every Tuesday night to do a show. Obviously, it's going to be yeah. pretty drag on. Uh, and, uh, and then it's to the point where, even when we're just doing the audio, we brought him in still. We have a guy from uh, the Bronx that's on every week. We have a kid from Texas that joins us. We can start bringing in uh, guests, fans, and, and guests that actually know how Skype works. We actually had a few wrestlers come on and did Skype when we are first starting to do the video. 
Um, you know, one's big kind of no computers enough, which is hard depending on what you're talking about. If you can't do a tech show, everybody can figure out Skype for the most part, everybody's into computers. If you're doing a wrestling show or a music show, maybe only knows wrestling, maybe only knows music, and they're not really big on the computer thing if they even have a MySpace, you know? So, but we'll get more into that. But yeah, all those computers are, are ones I built. They're slow, so instead of just doing a lot of tasks on one, it's like, this is the one where I check my show notes. This is the one where Skype runs, maybe have some multiple Skypes all plugged into a board. Um, but there's definitely there's the software to record those all on the page. Sure. That's, uh, yeah, this is the corner of my new one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I have everything just piped through the board. I used to have a four channel, but again, I started adding those computers. Um, and basically everything pipes into here. It's got the fan power for the one really good mic I have. And that nice green cord uh, that I got from a Belkin splitter uh, just plugs in the laptop where I record. That's where I plug in the audio. That's your old school studio. Check spoon ratings. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's, there's proof right there. That still gets hit on YouTube. Um, so. Okay. Uh, like I said, you can do this with up to a, I mean, as little as a digital recorder, which I, mine ran out of juice. I didn't check the charge. I was going to record this episode, this uh, session. But uh, you can start with a little digital recorder that costs $40, get a nicer quality audio for like $70. And that's all you really need, except for your editing software. Mm -hmm. Or here's the different uh, things we've been talking about. I mean, should I drink that story with a webcam too? Uh, one of the things I will say though, and this is from a consumer, you want to try to get your sound quality up because I can't put up with bad audio for too long. Mm -hmm. uh, it just, to me, it's hard to listen to and it. It could be that way at the beginning, but you should try to improve your audio as you go because some people, I'll turn it off unless I'm really interested in it. If it's squeaky and cracky and, and things like that, I've had episodes that I did like that and I came back and like apologized for a quarter of the episode because I felt so bad. There wasn't anything I could do with it. I did something wrong. Shell and I did a show at her cabin and I had my iPhone right next to my laptop. And it, and it was transmitting into the... But we didn't know. <clears throat> we and we were lucky because five minutes after the start of the show, I don't know if I moved the phone, but it stopped. And that, I, I was getting ready to delete the show, and it was, it was a good that show. That leads to another good tip. If you have the ability, a lot of times, you know, with the software, you can turn on monitoring. Uh, you have to figure out different, it's different from program to program, but having the actual set of headphones, I actually see what's coming in, or you see, hear what's coming in, um, so you don't find out later, oh, that whole thing has static. You know, or I plugged it in wrong, or, or yeah, I've done that before. Thankfully, I believe in multiple, multiple backups, hence all the computers. Uh, so I have like recording like two different places and on streaming to the internet to record someplace else. So another component you need is your editing software. You have to have something, and this will help you a lot if you do end up with some bad video or some bad audio. Mm -hmm. uh, you can normalize the selection. You can. You have to play with each individual type of software. I use, like I said, Adobe Edition. Mike knows a, a whole other, a whole Audacity, bunch of other ones. That is free. I use SoundTrack just because I have it on hand. Um, but you can capture noise really profiles and get rid of background noise sometimes. Sometimes it makes everybody sound like they're talking in a can. There's or cheaper ones too. Doesn't I'm like, sure. Doesn't, I think Sony has something. Is like a There's free thing. ones too. Sony on Mac, Acid. On Mac. Acid. 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 And I mean, with Mac, I think that comes right loaded with it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna let you. Sword does a video. A fantastic gift. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, that's kind of how I feel. Um, um, I'm sorry, I'm not caught off by that. It was in there last year. Was it last year? Oh, he does a good video. All, all I remember is the uh, is the guns. Um, <laughs> or did I just spoil that? No, oh, okay. that before, nobody, nobody said anything. Uh, yeah, like we said, video, you can start off pretty pretty low as far as that goes. If you're just doing kind of a video block, it seems plain of them out there. Um, you know, if you've got a bad webcam, that's kind of our experiment with the, what I'm doing with uh, Chachi for the Chachi Says Good Cast, is the guy's got a really good personality. He has really crappy equipment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the crappy webcam, kind of like what SIGT, uh, should I drink that? 
started with. He has a BlackBerry phone they gave him from work as video, and he has his like original G1 Android phone. So it's a pretty interesting task for me to edit it. Um, and say, so, and this is this is something we'll get more into, but um, it's so much easier now than when I started. You know, I mean, you can just throw something on YouTube. You know, um, Blip TV is really good. So see what we're talking about. We'll talk about the right thing. Um, Blip TV is a really good service, and they have some really good options for like eight dollars a month. They convert it for you, so you don't have to worry about that. They get it on iTunes. Um, and uh, well, I think YouTube has editing now. I'm not sure. I think it? they just added that you can edit in YouTube. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like that. yeah. <laughs> said, I mean, that's so you don't even need to buy. It. I mean, you, get, you you can settle on Windows Movie Maker or iMovie, which is fine for stuff like that uh, to get you started. Um, so if you can edit in YouTube, then you don't need the software for editing. Exactly to that point. But then again, the only problem with YouTube is you can only go so long. Right? Yeah, there's like so just raise it. I think the 15 minutes. Uh, but I got like an old director account, so I just throw like hour and a half videos on. <clears throat> That's why you notice everything for PodCamp and all my shows are on my old old account. That uh, and I just kind of link them off to everything else because I, I can't get an account like that unless I'm big enough to get a, get in with YouTube. That I've found at least so far. Is anybody interested in a video podcast in here? Um, yeah, we're going to be talking. There's going to be video podcasting 101. I think you're doing tomorrow, uh, and, and uh, I'll be doing the 201 where we talk about kind of more of the process what I've been doing since the beginning of the year uh, with switching video and using Skype integration, and we're going to be doing a live uh, broadcast of the awesome, the awesome cast, uh, which is our tech show that we started a little bit ago. So, kind of more demonstration. So now you've got your show and you've recorded it and you've edited it. And now what do you do with it? The next thing, the next step is you have to get into a syndicator, get into a, you got to get it out on the internet. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend just putting it on your site and that's it. I mean, there's, I call them syndicators. I don't know, Libsyn's one of them. I use Libsyn, who's in the building, and I upload my show to them, and they send it out all over the place, and they, they host it. You know, they, they have a place to download it. They provide me a place for my show notes. I also have a blog, uh, if you want to call it a blog. I have a WordPress account to support my show, but there's some limited stuff right on the syndicator. Uh, and I'm not promoting Libsyn. I use it. I think it's good, but it costs money. There's ones that don't. Yeah, I use TalkShoe. Um, is anybody from TalkShoe in here this year? Okay. They, they stuck up on me last year. Um, I've been using it. It's free. They're local. I believe their offices are in Wexford still. Um, they kind of more no frills. I, I think you got a really good staff package, I think, and everything we talked about before. Right. Um, and, and I'm kind of married to talk to don't want to lose half my viewers, so I'm not going to migrate it. Um, but one, I think that brings up another point as far as ease of getting into this podcasting is with talk shoe, there's blog talk radio, there's the ones that will, like, they will literally let you, you can just call a phone number and record to their servers, and, you know, quality's going to be, it's a phone bridge, it's not going to be super awesome, high quality, but it, they'll allow you the ability to operate taking phone calls and everything. It's kind of more, it, it's, it's easier to get off the ground, and for you just to get started, uh, to kind of figure out what you're doing and actually getting your voice out there and seeing what it sounds like and interacting with people. They have chat rooms built and everything. And I think Blog Talk Radio has a little bit... I haven't actually been in their their site with an account to see how their podcast is, but I understand that there's a lot more... It's, it seems like, from what I've heard of other people, it seems like there's a little bit more control over the callings and everything. Like, you see more of the numbers and everything. Uh, but we've since kind of... Uh, migrated away so you know, the video. But again, you stream Justin TV if you are doing the video, really easy. You just turn on the webcam, go for it, and they actually, I think, have a lot of abilities to bring in, like if you want a second guest from another account, and their video stream can be in there and you can manipulate it. You can, I think, play YouTube videos and you stream. It's moving along, it's moving going. fast, it really is. But it's it again goes that, like the editing's like right there on right. the websites and everything. You know, so while it's on your video, it's, it's pretty easy to at least get started and start to put a concept out there. But of course, you know, you always want to look at how can I improve this? You know, again, we talk about longevity as an evolution of whatever you're doing. So you're not going to be doing the same thing for five years. Unless, you know, your content, it works, you know. It's just something uh, off the cuff. 
When I started, I, my brother had a podcast in Tacoma, Washington. And up until it went, he still administers it from the West Coast, believe it or not. It actually resided on a server in his house until we moved it to GoDaddy. But uh, there's all kind of different things going on. Now, getting your content to the syndicator, the best way is by FTP. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, that's my opinion. Uh, the thing with video files, video files are large. Yeah. Uh, I use FTP. You can also, most of these places, you can direct transfer it to them. Yeah. Right a lot of times they'll have it right there on their site. You can say, you know, should your file go up. Um, There's a lot of free FTP mm -hmm. uh, software programs out there that you can get. And uh, that's what they like the best, too. Yes? How? Are the syndicators from the previous screen? How are they different than iTunes? Like, what's the difference? Uh, you you don't put. We well, basically you're not putting your file on iTunes. Apple is not serving there. Okay. You need to find somebody. Just pretty much like you put your site on GoDaddy, even though it is like you know sort of from .com or whatever for me. Uh, you need. It will be. They'll sit on TalkShoe. Okay. It'll sit on Libsyn, and you point. You submit that link with its information to iTunes. Um, it's pretty easy. Uh, they usually have instructions in, like Tashu has a hey. So in other words, the file sits on a server that you either own or are paying for. Yes. You have some right. agreement that your file sits on the server. Some people are so robust they host it on their own server and set up the RSS coding and everything. I don't even want to do that. Yeah, mine sits on the server. And one yeah. of the most important things there uh, between iTunes and a syndicator is statistics. You you get no statistics from iTunes. Yeah. Okay. That, they own those statistics. Okay. Statistics are part of the package when you hook up with one of these uh, syndicators. Okay. And, and, and starting off, uh, you know, statistics are really important. Make sure you got a good package. If you are looking, you know, just to see who's involved, you know, just to see who who you are reaching out to. Um, like I don't have the ability, you know, what I have to look at regionally or or you know, you can just get a total count overall. Um, but I know, you know, again, Libsyn does and all these other services. So shop around for that, you know, if you're not so concerned, you just want to get into it, you know. Just depends. So all the stats are through Libsyn much? Well, I have my stats on a couple different ways. Uh, Google Reader has a free statistics uh, program. Google Analytics. Google Analytics. Google Analytics. Google Analytics. Google Analytics. Uh, That's for the website. That's not as good as Libsyn. There's yeah. a lot of disparity between Google Analytics and, and Libsyn. Uh, I'm also on Blueberry Statistics. I submit my feed to them and they do statistics. Uh, but Libsyn just upgraded to Libsyn 3. And they really, their statistics got a lot better. I mean, you wouldn't believe how many people listen to my show in San Antonio, Texas. Shout out to San Antonio. But, uh, <laughs> And, and the different countries, and you, you can break it down that way. And it's really, uh, it's really amazing to me. Yeah. Uh, okay, where are we going? What are the syndication fees like for other syndication? Fees? I'm sorry. Syndication fees, like for, through Libsyn or Blue, uh, I have a real, I have a high, I have 800 megabyte storage. It goes by how much storage you Correct. require. Uh, when I went with, we we both got iTunes. Uh, we got apps. Right. All right, so we can provide additional content to our listeners that decided to become and that's another mode, gold members. And that's another mode of delivery. I mean, you know, not just the iTunes, like these guys, the Wizard Lips, and uh, I, I, again, I host an iTunes or on TalkShoe, but I'm able to point that to Wizard's app to provide it to people with iPhones. Um, you, know, the, you know, not just through that. Plus, there's other stuff, like you mentioned, like, like Podcast Pickle at the beginning. Right. You look out there, look up Podcast Directories. And yeah. I don't know if they're as prevalent as they were like five years ago when I started. I remember when I started, like we didn't know if iTunes was going to keep going doing this. And I sat there and listed my show <coughs> pages and pages of just podcast directors because they're just other little communities to list your programs. Um, yeah. Because uh, I was looking at like the statistics part of it. Yeah. Oh, all right. Back to your the price wise. Yeah. I think mine right now is 800 megabytes a month. And I pay thirty-six dollars a month. Okay. You could get much less than that. And there's even some that are free, if I'm not mistaken. Talk is free, Libsyn's free. I think Blog Talk Radio has a free and a paid <coughs> uh, it's broken down by features on that. Do they have a penalty feature for popping over your 
I never had a problem with Nipson, but I don't know what the policy is. Okay. Yeah, it depends. You, you, you can look into the policy. Yeah. How much would how would you know how much you needed? By how big your bottle is. Uh, Just like whatever whatever size the. If you're going to do an hour podcast, an audio podcast, yeah, it's depending on how you what file format you use. Mm -hmm. In in uh, MP3, it's going to be fifty to seventy megabytes, depending on how long it is. And whatever. Okay. At least that's my experience. And then you got to figure out how many shows you're going to put out a month. And determine your file, you know, the yeah, how many you megabytes you're going to need on that server, and then pick that plan. They have more than one plan. Is, is there like a difference in price with bandwidth or anything like that? That's what you're paying for. I, I mean, I don't understand the. It's, it's oh, yeah. unlimited, basically. Uh, well, the bandwidth, how much, how much is being downloaded versus how much is stored. I don't think that matters. Uh, it's all that's, storage. Okay. Okay. It might depend on uh, from service to service. Just like if you're looking up web posts. Uh, they have different standards. Yeah, it's it to it, web hosting. It's pretty, it's pretty much the same concept. Okay. Uh, depending on what host you're going with and what they kind of sell you on, but it be the bandwidth or the space to store the file. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Because we're going to have a little bit of time here. Yes, sir. So what's Feedburner then? That's, can that's you guys one tell of those syndicators. syndicators. Uh, well, yeah, well, Feedburner is initially, if you have a blog, and, uh, you know, again, if you're using WordPress, you have that RSS feed that right. people can subscribe to in Google Reader or whatever they're using to get your post. Right. Um, it, it, and for podcasting, it adds a few features, like you go to, you go to the, you know, your link for feed burner, you know, it comes up with all the posts, and it has the subscribe to iTunes, subscribe to whatever else. You know, you can put a podcast on your, like, iGoogle page, you know, even, even if you wanted to. Basically, anything that has that where you can bring content into it, uh, you know, I'm, 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 like your Yahoo homepage, you can probably do the same. You know, um, so it, it just it just adds the features there. I think the stats are a little different because they they kind of look at. What, but again, if you already have a podcast, same problem. Same, same problem I have. If you already have a podcast, if you want those stats, you need people to use that feed burner feed. You know, just like if you decide you want to use, uh, you know, Pod Track or something. Uh, but you've already done a show for a year. You know, you don't have the rest of those stats going through them. You know, and all those people already listening to the show, already subscribed to iTunes, you don't have that link. You need to resubmit with a new thing and tell people, hey guys, you should go over here just because I want to find out more about you. You know, which is a really tough sell. And if people are getting it just because it's easy for them to come to. It, it, there's a chance of just people not going back to you. Isn't FeedBurner one of the, like, I found one of the advantages of FeedBurner is I had the one link then that I submit to iTunes, and even if I change where I'm hosting my blog or my podcast. If you already have FeedBurner set up, yes. And then, then FeedBurner will just direct it. Right. If it'll you're on TalkShoe, and that's what's the point of that, uh, okay. iTunes, uh, to my knowledge, they can't just change, hey, this listing for Wrestling May Have Show. You just change where it points to. I don't believe you can do that. Okay. But uh, iTunes... Kind of does a dis flow of opinion. iTunes kind of does a disservice to podcasting for as much as it we're hinged on it for podcasting, uh, because there's no support. If something's going wrong with your feed, and, and, and you can't figure it out. Apple doesn't care. You know, I think it's pretty obvious with Steve Jobs' recent keynotes that he doesn't care about amateur hour. And to them, that's what we are. You know, yeah, we even even Leo Laporte, even the Cena people that have their shows, to them it's amateur hour. You're not NBC, they don't care. So, oh, which is unfortunate. It is, but it's a fact. There's, there's podcasts out there that are ABC and NBC and everything else. Uh, and meanwhile, podcasts are, are bringing the people to iTunes to pick all this crap up. We started this. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's why it's very important for you to have, you know, but this is covered in other blogs. It's important that you say you're pointing that file to other places, point it to your Facebook page. Point it to God MySpace if people you still use it, to your YouTube page if you have video. Hell, put your audio cast up with a picture with your website, stick it on YouTube, people will find it. You know? I've done that with some of my old interviews from the audio show. It's just a new way for people. You gotta go where the people are. You know, unfortunately everybody's on iTunes because everybody's got an iPod, you know, you know, blanket statement, but everybody's got an iPod, if they're using iTunes, it's easy for them to get to. You know, I still get a lot of I have an interview podcast that uh, I did for several years. I ended it, I'm going to do a new concept, and I have a music fun time show. I look at it, I still get between 100 and 300 hits. Previously, it would average about 600 hits every week. I have not updated that for over a year. 
But I've interviewed the Cottonmouth Kings. I've interviewed other people on this label, other people that actively tour. You look up the Cottonmouth Kings, you see my old interview segment under podcasts. So. Yeah, I did one too. I did one in, when I got married, before I went overseas, I did a podcast with my brother in Las Vegas. And let's just say that that was a little bit, uh, we abided a little bit, even as we're doing the show. And they're still hitting that show. I mean, that was, Tell them about your gear. The Jack Daniels microphones. <laughs> we had two microphones. This is classic. Two Jack Daniels bottles with microphone cords wrapped around them and a mic sticking out. <laughs> so, awesome. Hey, I gotta ask one thing. We're running out of time here a little bit. Uh, just as a podcaster, when you get in there and you listen or watch a podcast, uh, do the people producing it a favor and send them an email or comment on their site or something. Uh, I'll have. 3,000 people download something in one email. You know, and I mean, you can, if you can, you can, we still love you. But we do like to hear from you. I do. I like to hear feedback. Shell likes to hear feedback. We're not making any money in this program. You made a couple tips at the, at the lounge. I made a tip, <laughs> But, uh, and, and if you want to hear me get beat up, you got to listen to the show. She can help. Yeah, she'll do it too. Uh, our, our, where you can find us, this is my show up here. That's a. Uh, I think that's right. That's still right. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's. That's, that's your. Uh, all my side. All here. my stuff's linked off of there. All my shows, all my projects, and blog, and all that stuff. So yeah. And again, if you're gonna, if you're gonna start a podcast, take a little bit of time and really think about the idea that you're going to use. It's it's the most important. Yeah, whatever you're thinking about doing. Uh, that's like the most important part. The first step is figuring out what uh, what you're going to do it about. Because like mine, all I have to do is wake up and either turn on the local news or go take a walk. And you people are my content. I just yeah, watch, I just watch talk. you and talk about. Some about the notes you were telling us in that session. Yeah, what I do is is I'll just go about my life and I take my iPhone and in the notes app. If I see somebody doing some stupid something funny, I just take notes out and write it down. Mm. Lady opened her car door in the middle of the parkway and whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. But yeah, if you, uh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Especially in like grocery store parking lots. That's one of my Yeah, for me, like I said, it's stuff that I'm talking to people. The people I have on my shows are people, uh, you know, Rob on, on the tech show, we're at parties. We're here talking about the same stuff. You know, same with the wrestling show. We're talking about, you know, whatever's going on in wrestling, and old, old wrestling or whatever. And I'm talking to you about jumping. <laughs> jumping giant and face. Crazy, you know. I had to have him on the show because he kept telling me about it. And I was like, oh, Did studio, you? tell me about studio wrestling in this That's uh, <laughs> great. All right. Because, uh, you know, oh, I got transplant. Yeah. Can you sign Rosie? Do you find yeah. any good um, forums or blogs out there that people are just talking about podcasts and how to do it with tips? Yeah, there's some. I haven't uh, visited any lately. I remember when I was getting started. I did. There's a whole bunch of podcasts that are just on podcasting. They also, uh, <laughs> the For Dummy series also has a podcasting book. Uh, the For Dummy series? Oh, okay. Uh, what was the ones uh, uh, Justin talked about in session? Uh, where, I can't remember the name of it. Um, I'm sure if you do a Google search, you'll find something. Does anybody know the ones that were there, like the how-tos, like how RSS works, how podcasts work? Oh, yeah. Works? And they're like the sketches, like the really... Oh, um, oh, yeah. oh come on. That was, and this is an example of crowdsourcing. Common craft. Was it? Common craft. Common craft. Common craft. Yep. If you're like, you having a trouble, a trouble getting a handle on what the heck is RSS, how does this work, how does this point to everything, they are really good. I was, I wish I, I could just do a session with their videos. Because <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're fantastic and break everything down sure really well. Like Anything else we can help you with? Or? Common craft and then what's an RSS or whatever you want to learn. Do you have, um, have you looked for commercial sponsors? Or? I run PSAs. He runs PSAs. I, um, I, I work with uh, affiliate stuff. Uh, I, I have a creative junk. 
And this that, that's the reason you want a, a yes. record or the, or the statistics to show. Yeah, that's the problem. With an affiliate, you don't need yeah. a record of the statistics because you're convincing people to go to a link or buy a product or something like that. But if I have st statistics to support the numbers I know I'm getting, but they're not, you know, but unfortunately they're not broken down as well as I'd like them to be, you know, because I started it before I knew all this stuff. Uh, I can't present to somebody as easily and say, hey, I have this core audience that fits for you. This is how many dedicated people are doing this. Because um, they want to be about it. I'll tell you what I did last month. Blueberry started an uh, advertising program. Mm -hmm. And they had me fill out a survey. And I had to get linked in. To, they had my stats. Mm -hmm. So they haven't contacted me back yet. But uh, they want my stats. They're getting my stats now. Steven from the tech buzz, the guy walking around with the camera, streaming everything, uh, he actually goes through Blueberry and he's got, I guess, it looks like he's got a pretty good thing going on right, with them yeah. uh, as far as that. It's more as commercials and those things. It's like, it's like this week in tech life. Your average podcast, though, unless you really have a million people listening to you, I wouldn't yeah. expect to make any money. I mean, you can, you can sell it to somebody small uh, that you have a niche. Uh, there's other sessions on this. Uh, but if you have a niche and you have a very passionate niche, that's going to be valuable to somebody in a lot. So you just figure out who that is. Anybody else? That's all we have. Thank you for coming. Um, Hope you enjoyed it. I'm